So I want to bring up another product, though, that you're going to see on the shelf riding right alongside the Grubex. And, and if you do find imidacloprid these days, we found some at the Menards up in northwest Indiana. Jake, the lawn kid, and I did. We found a product there. I think it might have been the Menards brand. You can look at the video there on the Lawn Care Nut channel. And I think that was an imidacloprid product they were selling. So you'll still find either one of those on the shelves. Riding right along with those, you're going to find a spectricide product. It's called spectricide triazicide insect killer. Now, I'm going to be careful of the words that I use here, but I'm just going to ask you to, when you see that product, don't be a victim of marketing. Make sure you read beyond the headlines. One of the things I notice a lot these days is people read only headlines. They'll read only marketing messages, bullets, blurbs. They want to get a summary of things. I'm going to ask you when you're getting products for your lawn, don't do that. Dive beyond the headline. Dive into the label. Read the fine print. If something has an asterisk next to it, follow that asterisk and understand why. Why does this have to have an asterisk on the front? That should be like a red flag. And it is in this case. So I'm going to describe this product to you. If you're somewhere where you can search, go ahead and search Spectricide Triazicide Insect Killer for Lawns. It's a green bag. Looks like it's got a sunburst in the back. The one I have here that I took off of a big box store website in the top left in yellow writing, it says kills 100 plus insects. And what you're going to see right across the middle of it is you're going to see a, a red and yellow banner. It's red on the left and yellow on the right. On the left, the red banner reads, kills on contact. Now, again, this is an insecticide. This is an insect killer. It's in that section. It's going to ride right alongside of the 24-hour grub killers. It's going to ride right alongside of the grub X, which is a preventative. It's going to run right in there. It's going to run probably anything from mosquitoes, chinch bugs. All these things are riding right along together. This one hopes that it's right in the middle of all of that, of course. And I'm going to tell you that it's not a bad product. I just don't like the way that the label reads. And I'm going to caution you about that when you see it. So again, on the left in a red banner, kills on contact. On the right in a yellow banner, season long control. Then in smaller print next to the word season long control is against ants. Now, here's where the challenge comes in. Beneath these two banners that read kills on contact on the left and season long control on the right, even the way the banners are oriented, make your eye go a certain way. You look at the insects listed below and what do you see? You see chinch bugs, you see grubs, you see mole cricket, you see ants with a tiny little asterisk next to it, which is the one that corresponds with the season long control. But I also see fleas, ticks, and sod webworm. I see all of these pictured on the label, as well as the words of what they are on the label. And I see kills on contact on the left and season long control on the right. Now me, if I go into the store with the mindset that I need something for grubs, this is not just me by the way, I've had other people send me the same product and tell me they, and ask me, they've questioned it. Hey, is this gonna be a grub preventative? I get this a lot, that's why I brought this one up. And you're gonna see it's a good product. I just don't like the way it's labeled on the front. Actually, it's not even the label. It's just the marketing pictures that I don't, I'm not fond of. So if you work for these guys, try as a side, I don't know who you guys are. I, I'm, not, I'm not doing that. I'm just, I'm just looking out for my people here. So I just wanna be careful. But the long and the short of it is if I'm going in and I'm concerned about grubs, I'm gonna get this because I'm gonna see the word season long control. My assumption is because the word against ants, which is the only thing that's controlled season long are ants, everything else is only kills on contact. But because I see both words, I assume that all the pictures on the label are both. In other words, I assume because of the way I look at this that, that grubs are kills on contact and or season long. I assume that sod webworms are kills on contact and or season long. I assume that Ticks are kills on contact and or season long. I assume that ants are kills on contact and or season long. But in the truth, the only thing on this label that is kills on contact and or season long is ants. And by the way, it's not even every ant. If you keep going through the label and you read it more, it will say that it kills all of the ants, but it excludes harvester and pharaoh ants. Now, I don't know anything about ants, and we're going to go into the different names of some of these insects because it's kind of funny. I understand why maybe this product can't kill pharaoh ants because pharaohs are kind of hard dudes, man. Pharaohs are like enslavers, right? Pharaohs were rulers. They ruled with iron fists. So I understand why maybe pharaoh ants might be tough. But what about harvester ants? They're just simple harvesters. They're just harvesting. They don't seem aggressive. Why does this product not work on them? What is special about harvester and pharaoh ants that this will kill every other ant in the ant world? 
but it won't kill them. I don't understand that. Either way, I don't like the way that looks because, again, when I look at all those pictures, my assumption is that all of those insects are killed on contact and season long. So be careful if you get that. It is only season long control for ants. Now, is it a good product for season long control of ants? I don't know enough about pest control to tell you that, but I do know that this is a good product that will kill on contact all of these insects. And we're going to look through a little bit of that right now. So if you do need a 24 hour grub killer, if you do need a 24 hour ant killer, if you need a 24 hour sod webworm killer, this triazicide here from Spectracide is fairly affordable. So by the way, the, the active ingredient in this product is again, one I cannot pronounce, Lambda Cyhalothrin, Lambda Cyhalothrin. So that's a different type of it. I didn't look too much into that active ingredient. So, so I'm not sitting here recommending or not, but I'm just talking about as far as what's on the label of this product and its affordability factor. It seems like it would be good if you needed to go ahead and make some, you know, some quick 24 hour kills on grubs or other type of insects like that that are invading your lawn or damaging your lawn like sod webworms and grubs would. I did want to dig in though, just because it's fun. I read labels and I hope that you, I, I want to show you this because I hope it will encourage you to read the label and look at some of these funny things on here. So I, I was, I'm always interested in why are ants named what they are? Like harvester and pharaoh ants, kind of interesting, right? I kind of already called that out, but look at all the, here's the ants that this product will control, that it will control according to them season long or kill on contact. Argentine ants, okay. Carpenter ants, I've heard of carpenter ants. Southern ants, field ants, Allegheny mound ants, cornfield ants, honey ants. I've heard of all these. Pavement ants. Oh, so these ants, it's like, it's like you're watching like a wildlife show. Like these are the lions that have adapted to live in the concrete jungle. Or these are the lions that, these are the strange lions that live in the lake and they go in the water. You know, you hear those things in the shows. Here are some ants that for some reason have adapted themselves to live on a pavement to the point where they're called pavement ants. I guess it's, I guess, is it not so bad to be a pavement ant? I don't know. Listen to this one. Red imported fire ant. Who would import a fire ant? Red imported fire ant. I don't get it. Why would somebody do that? Here's another one. Nuisance ants. So there's an actual ant called a nuisance ant. Like, how do you know that this ant is the actual nuisance ant and not that one? Why did he get the name of pavement ant when he's probably a nuisance? Why is this guy called the nuisance ant? I mean, who named these things? I got to wonder. Here's another one. This is a great one. How would you like to be the odorous ant? Bro, he's a nuisance ant, but that guy is an odorous ant. So this product will control season long or on contact odorous ants. Close related to the pharaoh ant are the pyramid ants. I'm assuming because of maybe the way they must form up or maybe the way their mound works. There's black turf ant, white-footed ant. There's the crazy ant. Not only could you be a nuisance ant, but you can be a crazy ant. Well, you can't be both. You got to be one or the other. So why is this guy crazy and this guy's just a nuisance? I don't know. There's the little black ant, the ghost ant. Ooh, watch out for the ghost ant. The thief ant. I love that. We have a harvester ant. So one guy is called a harvester and another guy is called a thief. I wonder how different their actions are. Then you have the acrobat ant. I want to be an acrobat ant. Sounds to me like the acrobat ant is the coolest dude at the party. Citronella ant. He's adapted to something. I don't know. Do they live in citronella candles? Because that'd be a harsh harsh world. And then how about this poor guy, the big headed ant? Like, was he the big headed kid in school? Like, is this, are they making fun of this ant? Are they saying, yeah, man, you're big headed dude. Like, is that his thing? Is that, are they making him live with a physical characteristic that is now his name? Yeah. He's a big headed ant. And is it good to be a big headed ant? Maybe it's good to be a big headed ant. I don't know. And then the last one, the lawn ant. Why does this one particular ant considered to own the lawn? And why is he called a lawn ant? I don't know. But these are all the names of the different ants that are controlled according to this label. Now, one more that's fun that I think you might have a little fun with are lady beetles. I do not know what lady beetles are. I'm assuming that's ladybugs. Ladybugs are super cute. I like ladybugs. I don't even know if they do any damage. I've never really looked at it. I just think they're cute. So lady beetles, listen to the names given to the lady beetles. I will not take a guess or venture a guess as to who named these, but listen to these. So here's the different names or types of lady beetles that are controlled by this product. The convergent lady beetle. Hmm. I'll let you run with that one. The seven spotted lady beetle, the two spotted lady beetle, and the 13 spotted lady beetle. That's why I think they're ladybugs. But are the 13 spotted lady beetles, are they a higher class than the two spotted? 
Or is it more like a Bible thing, like the two talented man, the seven talented man, and the 13 talented man? I don't know, but I just find that kind of interesting. Here's, the, here's an interesting one, and this is my favorite one. There's a lady beetle called the twice stabbed. I mean like stabbed with something, like stabbed with a knife. She is called the twice stabbed lady beetle. I don't want to meet the twice stabbed lady beetle. I don't know what kind of mood she would be in, but it cannot be good. And then finally, there's the Asian lady beetle. I'll let you run with that one how you want. So always fun to read labels, to learn new things, to get a chuckle. Maybe I'm just a super nerd in that way, but I can tell you that when you do that, not only will you get a chuckle, it really does open up your mind to want to learn more, to want to understand more about the products that you're putting down. And in the case of this triazocide, seems like you're going to be good if you want to take care of your lady beetle or your ant population, even if you have those terrible nuisance and odorous ants in your lawn. All right, so after that long diatribe, I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I had a lot of fun researching and writing that one. It took a long time, but I hope you like that. So leave me some feedback if you're on YouTube or wherever you're at. Let me know what you think about that type of research and going into things in that type of depth.